Hey ladies, I hope everyone is doing well today. Welcome to today's broadcast. Welcome to Black Women Making Money. On this channel, we talk about how to get your money right, how to do that through getting a better job, through entrepreneurship, through investments, and most importantly, um, building, you know, the, the personal finance skills that you need in order to be successful. So I wanted to do this session today with regards to health, uh, partially because of the session we had last week, where we had quite a few of you talk about health. We talked about, um, in that session, we that was a session called, um, if they won't build, then what, right? And and a lot of us talked about health and, and getting healthier and things like that. And I thought that today would be a great topic uh, for us to have this, you know, this discussion. So y'all know the first few minutes that we are here, I do something I call a church announcements that gives people a chance to come in. Just some basic stories that I see. I'm going to go over Kanye buying parlor and why I still stand 10 toes down that this is not a good business move. Um, people said that it's a good boss move. I said, okay, but it's not a good business move. And I'm going to explain to you why. Um, we have book club coming up. I'm going to tell you what the book is and when it's going to be. And then we're going to dig into tonight's topic. So the first piece of news here is um, <clears throat> getting church announcements. Everybody, please like the video as well as you are coming in. So the Girl Scouts has received the largest ever donation from a single donor. And that donor is Mackenzie Scott who is Jeff Bezos' former uh, wife. She has given uh, $12.8 billion to more than 1,200 organizations. And she has given the Girl Scouts a lot of money as well. I thought I had marked how much she gave to the Girl Scouts. But I grew up being a Girl Scout Um Oh, here it is. $84.5 million. $84.5 million to the Girl Scouts. I grew up as a brownie and as a Girl Scout. So I absolutely love this story. Um, shout out to the Girl Scouts. If you have young girls in your life that are Girl Scouts, y'all, the cookies are always phenomenal, even though we need to like eat the cookies less. I'm still going to buy the cookies and probably give them to other people. So um Thank you, AC, for saying this is going to be good. Hit the like button, please. Yes, everybody. Good evening, Computer and Coin. Hello, Tiff. Nice to see you all. Okay, let's get into some of this mess with Kanye, right? So Kanye bought Parler, um, and I'm going to talk with you about the fact that this is it may be a boss move. I heard someone say that last night. I was listening to another podcast uh, from a woman that I know, but it ain't a smart business move. So when this story came out, I actually did some searching because I wanted to hear it a little bit more from an original source. I didn't realize that the parlor CEO is Candace Owens' husband. Okay. So I'm looking on YouTube and I'm trying to get some information from an original source and things like that. And I find an interview with um, Jar George Farmer is his name. He is the current Parler CEO. They sold Parler apparently to Kanye, but really what they sold him was only the app and Parlor, the so Parlor did a reorganization, and um, I'm going to actually play some of the interview from Fox Business. But y'all, <laughs> Kanye did not buy uh, buy into Parlor the entire company. He only bought into Parlor app. And let's just break this down. This is um, Fox Business where. George Farmer, who is Candace Owens' husband, who is also the CEO of Parler, is talking about the sale of Parler to Kanye. I want y'all to listen to this. West expanding his empire 
into the digital stage. Kanye is planning to acquire popular search media site, a social media company, Parler. Joining me right now for a Fox Business exclusive with more on this breaking news is Parliament Technology CEO, George Farmer. George, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. It's good to be with you. So is this selling the company to Kanye West? <laughs> First of all, he, he laughed, y'all. He laughed. Let's go back and listen to this again. She asked him a very simple question, and he laughs. Best? <laughs> well, Parliament Technologies is the parent that owns the Parler asset, and the Parler asset is being sold to Kanye West. So notice this. Okay, so this is how rich people work where they will have like a parent company and then they will have different assets or different divisions of these companies in different legal entities. Kanye is not buying into Parler, the overall company. Par Kanye only got the app and the app is a money pit. I'm going to show you why it is as we listen to George do this interview. Let's keep going. Correct. And and tell me why you made this decision. I know that you reorganized the company and created Parliament Technologies as the parent just last month. I want to ask you about that reorg. But first, give us your take on why Kanye West uh, will acquire this and what this does for Parler. So, I mean, I think there's a couple of things to be said here. The first is that um, Parler needs needs yay in many ways uh because parlor needs its brand to expand and i think yay is very interested in expanding his social media presence what motivated this for him was of course his banning from other social media platforms and this is a trend that we've seen with so many different people uh instagram twitter closing down his accounts uh expressing you know discontent with wrong think uh on his part or at least tweets they weren't happy about and of course, this motivated him, like many other uh, influencers and celebrities of high caliber stature, to come across to us and to have this conversation with us. And when that conversation began, he said, you know, actually, this is kind of something that I really want to be involved in. And as his uh, quote in our press release went out this morning, you know, he said that free speech is, is, is an inalienable right. You know, free speech is something that we all must strive towards. Uh, he's he's very excited about this. Um, he The deal came together in short order. Um, and we are very excited about the potential that he can bring to the platform in terms of the growth profile of the marketing operation of this platform, which he's going to bring to it. OK, so first of all, Kanye is there for one thing, because George said it twice. He said marketing. Kanye is there for marketing. The second thing he said is that this was not a long negotiation. This was something that basically he was presented with. He liked it. It just so happened to be at the right time. And boom, you know, here it is, right? Um, so he is getting an app. He is getting an app, okay? I'm going to show you now where the real money is in this next question that Maria asked. So stick with it. And guys, we're going to get our ladies, I should say, we, we are going to get to uh, tonight's main topic. But you all know I wanted to talk about this just for a second here. So let's continue listening. I know you've raised already millions of dollars uh, for Parler, George, $56 million. Is that right? And what will Kanye West be paying to acquire Parler? <laughs> Well, the deal terms will remain undisclosed, I'm afraid. But uh, what will happen is that the asset will be sold and then Parliament Technologies will continue to service the Parler asset um, with an entity. So basically, they sold Parler app only, not the entire organization, to Kanye. And then they're still going to get money from Kanye every single month because they're going to do services for him. Okay. So if we know how apps make money, let's say it's something like a Twitter or you know things like that, they make money how? They make money from advertising. But if you have Kanye on there, which we know the things that happened uh, this weekend with the, the Nori and all of that stuff, how many advertisers do you think are actually going to come to the Parlor app? 
So then, you know, he could he could sell memberships or, you know, whatever. Yeah, he could leverage it for his presidential campaign. But I am telling you now, I see this as a big money pit. OK, so later on in the interview, uh, he George Farmer here again, everybody. This is Candace Owens husband here, George Farmer. OK, George admits that what they are doing with the parent company is they are buying, they already bought a cloud company. And if you know anything about cloud, cloud makes a ton of money. Okay. I'm going to show you something else here so that you ladies can understand exactly how much money Kanye is not being <laughs> getting or going to be a part of. So, um, Amazon has a huge cloud division, cloud computing division. It's like all the things that keep our data storage and things like that. In 2021, I think this is, AWS, which is Amazon uh, Web Services, it's their cloud computing, generated $19.74 billion with an operating income. Basically, that's how much, you know, net profit they made of $5.7 billion. Kanye doesn't own any part of the cloud computing business that Parler is going to have. That's said later on in the interview. Okay. They already have the Parler has, um, they said several hundred enterprise clients and Kanye and Parler app is going to be one of them. If I were on Kanye's business team, I would have said, no, don't buy the app, buy into the parent company. So I'm doing all of this because part of what I wanna do on this um, platform is educate all of you as well with regards to the things that you hear and us thinking that, oh, because somebody is a billionaire and they acquired this, they bought this, that they're, they're making boss moves. I'm here to tell you that what Kanye bought was a money pit. What, what he bought was a money pit. So um, that is it for that specific discussion. Uh, a couple other things. I asked everyone uh, on the community tab when you wanted to do the Build an Empire book discussion. And everybody voted for Sunday, November 6th at 5 15 p.m. So I'm letting everybody know now to get your books. They do take a little bit longer. If you're going to get the audio book, you can kind of get it immediately. But if you're getting the, the real book, it takes a little over a week to get. So I'm just warning everybody now that if you want to participate in the Build an Empire uh, discussion and you want to get your book and you want a hardcover book, you definitely want to order it now. Um, again, book club for this is going to be on November 6th at 5.15 uh, p.m. So and the final thing is me promoting myself. I've got a website here, helpmeraisecash.com. If anybody is looking for business funding, you could be a startup, you could be in business for a while definitely check me out. Um, I said by, to myself, I'm going to do a better job of promoting what I have going on. So with that, um, Happy Rich and Pretty is saying this is a great book. Yeah, look, I hope that you will participate in the book discussion because we're going to talk about it from a Black woman's point of view. So uh, he said himself, he doesn't read. Hopefully he had lawyers to read everything through. Well, here's the interesting thing. I don't know. I don't. Maybe his lawyers read the contract, and the contract um, is uh, what do you call it? Above board, right? I'm not saying that it's not because I don't. I don't know. I don't think that it wouldn't be. But a lawyer is different from somebody who is a business strategist who could say, "Wait, wait, wait a second. Parlor, the the parent company, is what you want to buy into, Kanye, not this app." the app is going to be a money pit. And they probably sold it to him as, oh, you you know, when you run for president, you'd be able to say anything and nobody could take you down. Yeah, that's great, fine. But the big money is in cloud computing. They're gonna offer data storage. They're gonna offer um, services. 
that's the big money. And I'll say this, Candace married well. <laughs> Candace married well. Let me just say that right now. Yeah, Tiff. And this is a discussion. If you all disagree with me, definitely let me know. But um, yeah. Yeah. they. <laughs> I think in two or three years, probably three years, Kanye will be crying about this too. So y'all can y'all can clip this and save it for future. <laughs> okay, so let's get started with tonight's conversation. So tonight's conversation is, are you broke because you're unhealthy? And I have had um, times in my life where, uh, you know, things just, hey, Black Widow Row, things just weren't going well for me. Right. And I, I've suffered with depression as so many of us have, or may have over the past, you know, 40 plus years that I've been alive. And about, I don't know, five months ago, I was really going through it bad, just really, really bad. And because I had you know, just this depression because I, I love my clients, but I, I woke up hating what I do. Any of you ever, you know, it's, it's Monday and you're like, oh, I got to go into that job. And you love the people that you work with, but it's just like, it's draining you. You're not happy. And because you're not happy, your money is taking a hit. You are not as productive. You just, you just have trouble putting one foot in front of the other. Well, I've been there. And when we had the conversation uh, uh, last week with regards to, you know, if they don't build, then what? And we talked so much about health. It really pricked me to kind of say, okay, let's have this discussion about health overall. And when I talk about health, ladies, I am not necessarily just talking about physical health, because there's a lot of different types of health that we have. There is, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, there's spiritual health. There's health with regards to having purpose and meaning in your life. I was reading an article about men and uh, Jordan Peterson was referred into it. And he said that one of the big problems that men have is that most of them lack purpose in their lives. And because they lack purpose, they become incels and things like that. I think we as women need to look at that with regards to, do you feel like you're living your purpose? And that may not necessarily be your job, the job that you were doing, it may just be that you, you need something else in your life that says, hey, I matter. This is my purpose. This is how I'm going to positively affect people. And thank you, Global Sisters Connection, for being honest about that. You're feeling it now. I just came out of it. So I definitely understand you know, where you are in life. Um, Sometimes we are not doing well financially because we are not living in our purpose. Sometimes we don't even know what our purpose is. We're, we're, we're struggling with actually stepping out on faith. Some of us, you know, the health that, that's broken in our lives has to do with emotional health. We may have emotional health issues and we may need to see a therapist in order to talk about it, in order to get the right coping skills that's needed in order for us to be successful. We also have people who, as women, we're taught to be feminine and nice. And some of us aren't speaking up when we need to with regards to people trying to take advantage of us, people trying to walk all over us. Our boss knows that he already gave us a project, but because we're the only reliable one in the department, we get put so we have so much put on us. 
these things are important. Maybe, maybe the issue is you're not speaking up when you need to. It could be your own mother, your own father that's pushing you. And because of the unhealthiness, the, the emotional, lack of emotional health that you have, it's affecting your wallet. It's affecting your prosperity. It could be an issue of rage. You could just be like at your wits end and, and angry and angry all the time. And you think that strangers don't see that. You think that other people don't see that. They see it and they feel it. When I was working in um, my office in Fairfax, even though I was my own business owner, things like that, people would kind of say to me, Sheree, are you okay? Are you okay? You think that strangers don't see these things in you, but they do. And sometimes they're, they're scared to come and, and engage with us because our emotional health is not aligned. For some of us, it could be some of the seasonal depression that is going to be forthcoming. So I actually have something to show you with regards to seasonal depression. Because if you're anything like me, during the summertime, you're okay with getting up and working out. But let it be wintertime. Let it be wintertime, ladies. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're going through it. So let's listen to this. This is about how to know if you have seasonal depression, and I want you to be able to forecast, and I'm going to give you a resource uh, that they refer to in here if you tend to have the winter blues, something to deal with, or something to help you, sorry. It means today is the shortest day of the year. Seasonal depression starts to set in for some as we start to see less sunlight and as temperatures drop. With the pandemic seeming to ramp up to, again, it could be even worse this year. And y'all, this is from December of 2021. So that's why she's making those references. But let's keep going. The Cleveland Clinic reports roughly half a million people in the U.S. suffer from winter seasonal affective disorder, while 10 to 20 percent may suffer from a milder form of winter blues. But how do you know if it's something more severe, like major depressive disorder? Dr. Craig Chepke says it's all about how long it lasts. But the holiday blues tend to be pretty short-lived and they can come and go pretty easily, whereas clinical depression is something different altogether. For people with major depressive disorder, as we call it, then it's more than the holiday blues. There is more persistence of it and it's more severe. Depression is the leading cause of disability in the world, with an estimated 17.3 million American adults experiencing at least one major depressive episode in the past year. It can really take away someone's ability to function in their everyday life, whether that's school function, work function, or they're in their home life as well. So what can you do to help fight your depression? Your first step is to check in with your doctor to make sure you have the right care plan in place. Some suggestions from doctors that you can do on your own, exercise and maintain social connections. And doctors also suggest sitting in front of a therapy light if you would like to for 30 minutes every day. That can also help fight off seasonal depression. And right now. Okay, ladies. So definitely wanted to show you that. So, uh, hey, Jay Antoinette. Um, I feel like that when I haven't had a recent win at my job or hit personal goals, I feel lost and discouraged. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, I can definitely understand that as well. Like I feel it when uh, I'm not just, I'm not fulfilled in any area of my life is like when I really feel it. Um, I personally need a serious break from corporate America to reset, setting myself up for a sabbatical to deal with this. All right. Love it. No matter what kind of front you put on, a lot of people can see through it. Very true. Because I think I have a good poker face and people are like, no, you don't. Um, I had to leave the North for this, move to Texas because of it. Yeah. So one of the things she mentioned in there was the therapy light. So I wanted to, I was like, I've never heard of that. So I went to Amazon and I put in therapy lights. They have here therapy lights for seasonal affective disorder. So uh, a lot of these are very um, cost-effective. 
So these are the sponsored ones here, but you can see that they are all sorts of shapes. Uh, this one is $40. This one is $25. It has a lot of reviews. So there are a lot of these that are out there. I'm actually going to buy one for myself because I do have seasonal blues issues. I do sometimes not like getting up. Oftentimes, I don't like getting up on winter mornings in order to do my workout and things like that. So this is just an option. If you know you have seasonal blues, there's a lot of different price points in here. So I would suggest you ladies consider, again, it's called Therapy Lights for Seasonal Affective Disorder. And this is something that could potentially assist you. So uh, you're saying I have a happy light for my desk. Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. So maybe having two, maybe having one for your desk and one for your home as well, you know? So another thing is you could also have physical. <laughs> you can be unhealthy physically, right? That's the, the main one that we think about whenever we think about health. And part of your issue could be lack of exercise. You're sluggish, potentially, you're not making enough money, you're broke because you're not even getting a good stretch in, right? Or some of us, like for me, I know when I even used to go to, there's a, a track near my house and I did three laps around the track, I was just so much better during the daytime. It seemed to get me focused. I was able to listen to a podcast or I could listen to some really good music and I could do my three, you know, three laps, which for me was, I don't know, it took about 45 minutes to do. So, it, but it really kind of recentered me. For some of you, maybe it is, um, again, doing some stretching or things like that. One of the things that I'm going to show you later on in an article, because it's been statistically proven, is there is a correlation between other areas where we're unhealthy and our money and our wallet. Yes, everybody, please like the video and share. Um, yes, my mental and physical health are keeping me broke trying to figure out solutions. Well, you're in the right place, Serena. So again, it may not be doing some huge you know, workout. Maybe it is just stretching. For me, just doing 10 minutes of yoga at one point really kind of lifted me out of the funk and the fog that I was in. And you can do that roll out of bed. You know, you don't have to put anything special on. You just roll out of bed, have your yoga mat there in your bedroom and, and start doing some yoga poses, right? It could be your bad eating habits. Now, some of us, and we know who we are when we, when we eat a lot of sugar or when we eat a lot of, uh, for me, it's potato chips. <laughs> you know, we can have a problem with our mood going up and down. And I think that when our mood goes up and down, that is not healthy. And that unhealthiness can lead to us. It can bleed over into the opportunities that we get. And it could lead into a uh, bleed into our productivity. So... Thinking about bad eating habits is important as well. For me, I've had bad eating habits probably for the past few months. And one of the things I did was I just said a few times a week, I'm just going to get a salad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything more than just get a salad. Thank you, Black Rose, saying your live last live was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I find being near nature helps. Yeah. I'm a sugar addict. You know what? Me, me too. Me too. But one thing I will say is don't try to slay everything at once. Maybe starting with one thing, because I'm reading Atomic Habits right now by James Clear. Starting with one thing. 
I've also heard that sometimes it's not about taking out sugar. It's just about adding something, which is why I said, you know what? A few times a week, I'm going to add in a really good salad and I'm going to move back to when I was my healthiest emotionally and physically and making good money. I ate twice a day. I ate at 8 a.m. and I ate around 3 p.m. Uh, that's part of the reason why I'm moving back to my home office was because at home, I honestly was able to cook healthier, eat healthier. It just had me a lot more centered and I made more money at the time. Black Rose is saying I'm addicted to soda. Yeah. Computer and Coin is saying I love yoga, especially vinyasa yoga flow. I hope I'm saying that right. It does something to my brain and helps it calm down. Yeah. Yeah. So another reason from a, a physical health point of view that we may be having issues is not enough sleep, ladies. Not enough sleep. I don't know about you, but I have been, <laughs> been in that not enough sleep category <clears throat> before. So let's watch this video about sleep really quickly. Talk about how lack of sleep affects work performance. Did you know that there are actual scientific studies proving that being sleep deprived is the same as being a little bit drunk? It's true. And you definitely wouldn't go to the office under the influence. Listen, we've all pulled a few late nights before work the next day, but the fact of the matter is that not getting enough sleep is downright dangerous for both your short-term and long-term health. Chronic sleep deprivation has a major impact on how well your immune system functions, making it easier for you to get sick with everything from the common cold to heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, or even hormonal imba imbalances. I feel like I have a hormonal imbalance. <laughs> and it can lead to increased anxiety and depression. It's pretty scary. Long story short, your body needs rest to keep your immune system in top condition. Okay. The reason I want to show that is because she talks about the fact, and it is true, that um, not getting enough sleep could be equivalent to, you know, um, <laughs> being drunk, right? I know for me, one big issue that I have, and I am going to have to deal with this major, is bringing my phone into the bed with me, bringing my cell phone into the bed, scrolling, seeing what's happening on YouTube, seeing what's happening on social media, reading emails, making sure that no client, I am not a plumber. Why do I care if my clients are having an emergency, right? Uh, that is not my life. There are stats now that saying that if you um, if you look at your phone 30 minutes before you go to bed, that is affecting your sleep. So it is important for us. You could be broke because you're not getting enough sleep. You're not getting restful sleep. Is your mattress? at the firmness that you need it, you know, uh, is your physical environment what you need? You're saying many of us fell off when COVID hit. I know oh, I'm like <laughs> ever going falling off. Um, but yeah, many of us did. I'm going back to eating healthier. Also, I'm still taking my vitamins and drinking water though. I also need to get more active. Yeah, for me and my vitamins, one of the things that I did because I have an iron deficiency is I put my vitamins in my iron supplement right next to my coffee. And that helps me remember to take them. Uh, taking a nap can burn calories. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it could be physical health. It could also be lack of, of social health. You could be socially unhealthy. You know, Sherry, what is social health? I, you know, what is this? It, it could be that you lack community. Do you lack people? I'm talking about outside of the chat on YouTube, but like real community of people who love you and care, you care about you and want to talk about more things than just divestment and what man is breaking your heart and things like that. Some of us are unhealthy in that we don't have people around us who actually love us and support us, who could just go and have a good time with, or who would check on us if we were sick. 
and needed help. That is social brokenness. We could have environmental unhealth, right? Y'all know how I feel about this. Some of us live in unsafe neighborhoods. One of my primary goals with this channel is to help as many ladies who live in unsafe neighborhoods move out of those neighborhoods, but you can't do that without money. Everybody, again, y'all coming in, please like the video, please. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to drop the StreamYard link in a few minutes. Um, you also, from an environmental point of view, just like your physical space, your bedroom, your kitchen is a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. It's, it's not clean at all. Any of you ever have like that pile of laundry sitting over there and you can't focus on anything else until the laundry is done, until you've vacuumed, until you know, you've know um, you taken care of your physical space. These things are important. One of the things that I, when I make the most amount of money, it is because I have myself on a schedule with regards to cleaning. I clean every Sunday morning. When I get myself on a routine and a schedule with my health, with all aspects of my, my health, I make the most money. When I don't clean the house on Sunday morning, I notice that my week doesn't go well. And your physical space, your physical space could be a reason why you are not making the amount of money that you could and should be making. Uh, a couple of other things, um, and I'm actually going to throw the StreamYard link in so that if anybody wants to come in and talk, you can. I'm going to pin it to the top as well. A couple other things I want you to think about. Oh, and let's see here. We've got Livin' Lovin' in the house. My mother was labeled as being part of the at-risk population to get COVID. She has been eating high-carb sweet food since her inception. She ate cakes in two to three days and didn't like the taste of water. Oh my goodness. Uh, her work let her go and said she couldn't come anymore because they were not allowed to have people at risk in front of the elderly. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, she got mad because her income became more volatile. I got mad because if she kept taking proper if she had taken proper care of herself, exercised and cleaned and ate mostly vegetables, this wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, look, it can have a huge effect on not just your mother, but the family as well. So yeah, our unhealthy habits can ultimately affect our pocketbooks. Absolutely. Um, I get energy at night, which is a problem for me. I should be sleeping then. Uh, look, there are some people who are, are are night owls, naturally, right? There are some people who are night owls, uh, naturally. Some people I've heard, they lean into that. So, you know, depending on the type of job that you have, if you are able to work from home and you are able to talk with your boss about, hey, you know, as long as I get my projects done, am I able to work later on in the evening, maybe shift your, your hours? That could be a possibility as well. Uh, I want to say a couple of additional things with regards to our health. One of the, the as I was doing my research for with regards to this topic, they said that there's intellectual intellectual and vocational health as well. And what that means is if you are stuck... If you're stuck intellectually, meaning that you haven't progressed at all with regards to the skills that you're learning, whether it's at your job or whether it's in your volunteer work that you're doing, you can fall into a depression, which can then impact your wallet. It could be the reason that you're broke. So I know for me, I've been a business plan writer now for 12 years and about five years ago, probably four years ago, four years ago, I, I started to feel stuck in writing business plans. And because of that, I was spending money in all sorts of places because I was trying to figure out why I wasn't 
happy, why I wasn't moving forward, why I wasn't progressing, things like that. And being stuck with regards to not growing intellectually, not growing in my career, not growing vacationally, that honestly did affect my wallet. So part of me being here tonight is to kind of impress upon you that if you are not, if you have people around you who do not intellectually stimulate you, that could be a cause for your depression, for you not feeling like you are moving forward, and ultimately for you being broke. Because remember, all of these things are kind of pulled together. And everybody, I see more people coming in. Please like the video. Please like the video as well as you are coming in. If you hate going in on Mondays, if you don't like what you're doing for work, if your work has no creativity to it, even though you're a creative person and you don't have a creative outlet at all, let's say you work in finance, but you are an artistic person. Great. Are you able to take financial reports and, and add graphic design to them? Or are you able to do something outside of your work, like painting or something like that, that gives you joy? If you do not feel yourself, if you are intellectually unhealthy, if you do not feel yourself moving intellectually or moving vocationally, that could be a problem. If you're working all the time and you have no time for hobbies, you don't have time to garden, you don't have time to, for me, I want to go back to the shooting range. You don't like, I work all the time. I don't have time to do the things I really love to do that can seep into you financially being unhealthy. Hey, God bless. And everyone, again, the link is in, the StreamYard link is in if anybody else wants to come, if anybody wants to come and talk with me with regards to this. Um, the final thing that I have to share with you is, again, we are looking at the different types of health that is out there. And I'm going to show you a couple articles here. This is the first article from mind.org. It says here, the link between money and mental health. So it says here, if you're feeling low or depressed, you may lack motivation to manage your finances. It might not feel worth trying. Spending may give you a brief high, so you might overspend to feel better. You might make impulsive financial decisions when you're experiencing mania or hypomania. If your mental health affects your ability to work or study, this might reduce your income. You might avoid doing things to stay on top of your money, like opening your bills or checking your bank account. You might try to avoid thinking about money completely. Having a mental health problem might, might affect your insurance, so you end up paying more. So they basically have said that you, because you are feeling low, depressed, things like that, it will seep over into your finances. It'll seep over into the way you're spending. It'll seep over into the fact that you don't even want to go into your bank account, check your bank bank balance, you know, pay your bills on time, all of those things. But the inverse is true as well. This is from Purdue University. Mental well-being inherently is connected to financial wellness. Uh, the link between mental health and financial health are more connected than some may realize. According to Forbes, stress resulting from financial challenges is often chronic. Purdue's Healthy Boiler Program offers several kinds of assistance for mental health and financial health. Worries about finances came in as the number one stressor in the latest CreditWise survey, which was released in December 2020. So what I really wanted to focus on here is that stress resulting from financial challenges is often chronic. So we feel, you know, a lack of mental health. 
we feel a lack of social health. We feel like we're not moving or progressing in our careers. We feel like we all we do is work and we can't play and we can't socialize. Um, and that affects our finances. But also, if we're in, under constant financial stress, if it's been 15 years and you're still struggling and the last 15 years has been a struggle with regards to you um, having a savings account, being able to take the trips you want to take and only pay cash for them. You know, if it's always financial stress and challenge, that stress can ultimately eat you up physically and mentally as well. So that is my discussion for today. Let's see what you ladies are saying in here. I am st starting to focus on my health more. Great. Fantastic. Cleaning up my algorithm was major key. Oh, I love this. Too much news, gossip, and low vibrational content was really hurting my mindset. I have set up my YouTube to not have certain people, or, um, we call it, recommend it to me because it was just too much. It's just too much. Uh, exercise saved my life. It provided stress relief after my breakup, boosted my mood, and helped me interact with others during my group exercise class. Fantastic, Tiff. Now, the question is, with all of that, do you see your money going up? It could be your income going up. It also could be your savings, things like that. It's That's what I'm trying to say with this whole discussion today is if you are having money issues, it could be a mental thing. It could be a mental thing, you know? And I don't want to um, have you leave here without thinking, let me check my mental health. Seasonal, uh, the seasonal, we call it disorder. Seasonal blues, seasonal depression. The winter blues, that's a very real thing, right? If we're not eating healthy at all, that's that's a real thing. And that can ultimately affect our finances. So uh, last call for anybody who wants to use StreamYard and come up. Otherwise, you know, I just wanted to share this with you. Again, I want to remind everybody that the vote came in with regards to when we're going to do our book club for Build an Empire with Elena. Well, she's not coming, but we're going to talk about the book, Build an Empire. We're going to talk about it on November 6th, which is, which is a Sunday at 5.15 p.m. Uh, it was a very close vote, but that went out. So that's what we're going to do. If you are off ordering the audio book, you can get it right away. But I have ordered the softback cover, and that takes a little over a week. So don't forget. Uh, if you want, if you're like me, I like to like read in bed and highlight and take notes and things like that. You know, we're going to, I would suggest you get it now. So you have plenty of time to get it and read through it. But that is going to happen November 6th. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm a little stuffed up here myself. Uh, Arena Sand, thank you for addressing this topic. You are welcome. Great discussion and timely. I hope everyone is in a good place. Yeah, hope so. Okay, well, I don't see anybody here. So look, y'all, I'm gonna tell you right now, when we do this Elena Cardone discussion, y'all, y'all, you don't have to show up on camera, but I expect to see people hitting the stream yard link for that one. Right? That will not be a monologue. That, <laughs> that will be a discussion. Otherwise, I'm gonna call people. <laughs> okay. But again, I hope I said something today that bless you and that you get a chance to think about. And ultimately, I want you healthy in every way, financial, mental, physical, emotional, et cetera. So um, that is it for me. I'll see you ladies in the next video. Take care. Don't forget to like on your way out. Bye-bye.